uh, but in the past, with I had people who had opinions that I thought were ridiculous. I sometimes use the phrase, uh, what color is the sky in your world? Now, to me, that sounds a little funny. To them, that was quite offensive. Slightly. I can see um, how it could be offensive. Much, much more than I intended, right? Much more than I intended. There's a, okay. there's a symmetry there. Now, what happens when people get ostracized? What happens when we laugh at people for their ideas or we even make small small fun of them, they are basically pushed to find a community that agrees with them and gives them love. And, and I'll give you one, one example. And one of the, there was one guy who posted something about me. He described in details my crimes against humanity. Uh, he thought that I was the chief conscious architect that was trying to get people to be obedient uh, during uh, the COVID pandemic. And he described my, my crimes. And then he said that there will be um, Nuremberg Trials 2.0, right, in which people would be judged for their crimes against humanity. And he predicted I will be stand on trial. And he asked his followers the question of whether I should get uh, life in prison or public hanging. And, and about a thousand people responded. Now, if you looked at the responses, they were so positive, uh, not, not about me, of course. They were positive to this guy. They congratulated him on his insight and writing skill and how um, uh, thoughtful he was. There were, there were lots of emojis with hearts and hugs and all kinds of things like that. Now, if you just looked at it, you would say these people joined forces to, you know, to solve poverty, <laughs> to, to do something good. Like, why... Why were they so positive? Again, it's not for nothing. In the same way that the, the misbeliefs come to answer a need, these are people that feel rejected from society. And what they have done is created a community that is incredibly positive to each other. And they need that positivity. Um, so that, that's what happened. Anyway... There's a couple of other um, uh, social factors, but maybe I'll just mention one. So, there is a term in, from the Bible called Shibolet. Okay. And um, this, was, this is a term. There were two tribes that were very fighting with each other. And they pronounced the name of the plant in a different way. One of them said Shibolet. One of them said Sibolet. So I would walk around and I would see you and I would say, how do you call this plant? Yeah. And if you said it the way I do, I would say, okay, you're one of us, give you a hug. If you say it the way that the other tribes is saying it, sea bullet instead of she bullet or the other way around, I chase you away or try to kill you. Now, <clears throat> this term we're using to signal the idea that when I ask you what is the name of the plant, I don't really care about the name of the plant. I care about your identity. Now think about this general discussion and ask yourself how many people say things that have nothing to do with the truth but they have to do with signaling their identity. So, so for example, when I, uh, <clears throat> when I was trying to get to Israel after October 7th, I, I flew through London and my flight was cancelled. I mean, British Airways cancelled the flight. Um, so I, I went and I saw the, the, the pro-Palestinian demonstration. And, and there were okay. people who were calling to liberate Palestine from the river to the sea. Now, what these people were actually calling was the annihilation of Israel. Now, do they really mean it? A few people, maybe. But I think the majority of people are not saying, let's, let's now kill uh, 10 million people. Uh, uh, for this, I, I, I anyway, I, I refuse to believe that that's what they meant, but but nevertheless, they they were saying it. I think as a signal of identity, or in the U.S., there are people who say, "Oh, there's no such thing as gender," or there are people who say uh, Trump won the election. I mean, there's lots of things that people say that is more of a badge, uh, signaling of identity, than a claim about 
about the truth. And, and the problem is that the, the moment you have speech that is about identity and not about the truth, it's confusing. Right? So when somebody says there's no such thing about gender, what, do they really mean it? Or do they say it for signal? It's a very different interpretation yeah. to do it. Yeah. And, and of course, with social media, people have to say extreme things because otherwise nobody notices. Right? If I just say, oh, you know, gender is a really complex topic. How many people would, would, would follow me or say, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. that's right, that's right. So, you, you, we, yeah. so, so the nature of our conversation in terms of identity is becoming more and more intense. And uh, by the way, think about Brexit. How many, how many discussions about Brexit were thoughtful and informed? And how many of them were identity based? And then there's a vote. Right? After so little information, how, so little thoughtful information has been yeah. passed, uh, people end up voting about identity rather than about the real topic. And um, COVID became an issue of identity. Well, I guess some people might believe those, some people might believe that there's no gender, though. They might actually think that that's the truth, regardless of, of, of the identity politics. It, it could be something that they believe to be philosophically true. So I would say that um, in the beginning, it's almost never the case. Right. So, so when, when people utter something for the first time, uh, they, they usually don't really mean it. But then, of course, after people say it many times and defend it and so on, uh, they, start, they start defending it. But, but it doesn't mean that it's built on their true beliefs. They just start, pretend, they just start defending it in a bigger and bigger way. And, and after defending it, that that becomes more of their, their stand. But if you broke it into pieces, it's not necessarily that what, what they believe.